Whether you're a huge fan or not, Zelda has been part of most of our lives in one way or another. My very first Zelda game was Ocarina of Time. I consider it my second favorite Zelda game next to Breath of the Wild. Since then, we have had an endless iteration of stories and adventures. However, the most encapsulated memories that I'm sure you all have throughout the history of Zelda would have to be their bosses. Welcome back fellow bits, my name is Snoopers and today we're gonna go a bit deep into top 10 Zelda bosses. Shadow Link, Triforce Heroes. Three Shadow Links appear as the bosses of the Baneful Zone in the Den of Trials. They wield powerful versions of the items that appear in the game, and they have big ol' swords that will temporarily curse Link upon dealing damage. Their items are, by the way, chosen randomly, meaning you need a different game plan every single time they're fought. This is a pretty iconic fight with a constant appearing foe in the series. It would be a higher ranking if the ranged weapons didn't make this fight so easy. Ancient Automation Kolokos, Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword. This is one of the few humanoid bosses in the game. Its creepy dead-like stare is enough to seal away itself into your nightmares. This iconic fight is probably best remembered for its phases and designs. Kolokos is held together by the red cores in its arms and torso. After breaking off the first two arms, Kolokos will eventually use its lower hands to attack giving the hero a chance to break them off, as well as attack its chest core. After Kolokos has suffered enough damage, it pulls itself out of the floor and reveals its legs, giving it the ability to chase Link around the room. After dodging an attempted strike, Link can pull the cores out of its arms as he did with the first form. He can then pick up one of Kolokos cutlasses to use it to destroy its various parts, including its arms and legs. Link must then slice its cage apart with the cutlass, exposing the core to attack. <laughs> Twin Rova, Ocarina of Time. At first glance, many of us thought the big baddie was the giant axe wielding soldier. Until it is revealed, a Gerudo was just under a spell. Then, you face off the bickering baddies. Fire and ice witches are now your barrier. This fight felt really scary, since you're fighting two of them. Luckily, they take turns taking shots at you. Using your shield, you aim the blast back at the opposite element witch. You keep this up until they finally... ...into their dynamite attack form. Not so ugly now. Psych! Now all you gotta do is use your shield again and retain three hits. Fully charged up, you send the blast back. Jump onto the platform and get some hits in until it's all over. Not for nothing, but for its time, the cinematics of this was really cool. Especially the part where they visit the spirit in the sky. Phantom Ganon, Ocarina of Time. Not only is this fight a frightening one, it is also mechanically very unique. After making an appearance on his steed, Phantom Ganon enthusiastically enters one of the paintings. You soon find out there's a chance for him to come out of any of them. After a few hits with your trusty bow, he leaps out and starts shooting those funky magic tennis balls. Hit it back and forth a few times until it stuns him to the ground. Once there, take a couple of good whacks. Be generous with your wax. Ah! Repeat this until the whole fight is over. Ganon then speaks through the lit corpse, foreshadowing the biggest fight yet to come. Now, would you do me a favor and get in that gap between dimensions? Thanks. Ganon, The Legend of Zelda. How much more classic can you get? The first fight with Piggy Face Ganon. Sure, it's a quick little fight compared to the standards we're used to today. But in that time, all of this was crazy. 
moving away from the constant barrage of moving projectiles being thrown your way while frantically swinging your sword, hoping to get a hit on Ganon? Must have been a very mentally straining encounter. This is the final boss in your amazing adventure in this new game type that has never been explored before. Oh, and check out that skull on the map, neat. Twilight Fossil, Stalord. The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. Back in The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, we Let it rip. on a brand new item, the Spinner, to face off against one of Zant's monstrous creations. Stalord is a great boss. He has such a fantastic design. Who knew you can make a monster that can barely support itself upright? So menacing. You come at him with your babe, I mean spinner, from a rotating gear that surrounds the enclosure. Hit him right at the spinal core three times to begin the final phase. Now his head floats, folks! Now you're still using your spinner while dodging some spiky obstacles. However, this time you get to crack open that skull by spinning straight into his noggin. Making him tumble down, giving you the opportunity to slice that pesky soul reviving sword from his face. Until finally, he's re deadified. Majora's Mask, Majora's Mask. This double entendre doesn't go without further explanation. In the final battle of Majora's Mask, we encounter and fight, well, Majora's Mask. Like an early Cthulhu adaptation, Majora's Mask touts long, creepy tentacles in its initial phase, flaming them around like overcooked spaghetti while trying to impale you with its side spikes and shooting freaking laser beams from its eyes. Majora's Incarnation, sprouting two arms, legs, and one Cyclops eye, its second phase is a little, well, silly. Almost like a hyperactive newborn. <laughs> This mask starts running around like it's trying to find its missing Lego piece while waving hello to you from time to time in case you forget he's there. Oh, look, that's cool. Then we get even more freaky with his final phase, Majora's Wrath. Now we get a more defined and coordinated boss that likes to skip rope with his tentacles, all while making disturbing squeaky shrieks. <laughs> Remember the babe, I mean spinners from our last boss? Well, maybe they were inspired by this fight. Later on through the progression of the battle, you have to handle these eyeball spinners while worrying about the main baddie himself. Eventually, after you defeat him, he disappears into life forever, the end. Ganondorf, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. You finally find the princess in a sleeping state when this big dream eater shows up talking about the oceans and Zelda dreams, a king forsaking his people, blah, blah, blah. Then he transforms into a giant pig puppet. How Zelda stays asleep throughout all of this is uh, beyond me. Send your boomerang flying to cut the cords controlling this puppet. Eventually he turns into a uh, Pig spider. Now, this adds a cool perspective to the fight. I love the fact that you can see what is happening through the reflection of the water, showcasing the massive size of this thing. He turns into a slug or a snake-like creature, slithering around trying to get to a piece of you while you once try to hit that fancy blue ball behind him. This fight really sets the precedent of the epic battle you're about to have. Climb your way up to the top to face the final fight. Ganon himself. Atop a high platform, Ganon starts speaking about his people, his place from which he came, and the constant death that it brought. Then he reveals you're the last piece of the puzzle to grant anything he wants. Slaps you around a bit and then bada beam bada boom, Triforce, there it is. Right when he's about to ask for his desire, what he has spent his entire life seeking, boom. King Hen, King Hen Touch, King Hen Grant. And just like that, Ganondorf's plan fails. Losing his mind and the very first thing he wants to do is show you your future. This fight is truly something special. Not because of the simple mechanics involved, but because of the atmosphere that has been set. The constant flowing water, depicting fallen demise, the gloomy colors, the truly broken Ganondorf, 
It was all very intense experiencing this as a child. And then he stabbed a master sword in his freaking head. Yes. <laughs> Breath of the Wild, the final trial. Monk Maz Koshia. Breath of the Wild is my personal favorite game of all time, featuring endless hours of explorations, puzzles, and of course, bosses. Monk Maz Koshia is no exception. He is hands down the best boss in Breath of the Wild, forcing you to literally use everything you have learned up to this point to defeat him. This encounter 100% deserves the title, The Final Trial. He wastes no time facing you, immediately trying to push in the blows. Once you knock about eh, one fifth of his health, he flies back into the air, only to create nine copies of himself. Use the power of the Divine Beast, the Sheikah Slate, swords, anything to find the real monk. Did I mention you had to use everything you learned up to this point? After you get him half health or so, this monk gets chunk and turns into a huge behemoth. Deal enough blows while dodging his laser, and he will summon mine-like orbs. Suspend these close to him once you have the chance, and bring him down. Take as many whacks as you can while putting him in the stasis. And there you go, best trial ever done. Your reward? An ancient mechanical horsey bike. Unlock ultimate freedom in Breath of the Wild with Master Cycle Zero. <laughs> Ganon, Ocarina of Time. After the mighty tower falls and turns into a pile of ash and rubble, pure evil itself awakens. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, this transformation was terrifying. Look at those glowing eyes. And holy jeez, my sword? I can remember it so vividly. The feeling of helplessness inside me when I saw this giant dark board demon. I can't tell you how long it took me to figure out I had to hit that tail. I was a dumb kid. Honestly, the mechanics of this fight was not anything special. Hit the tail four times, knock him down, get your master sword, hit that tail, boy. Now you have Zelda, give him the love light, give him some face scars, and then yeah, impale his freaking head. Somehow, a giant metal blade through your skull isn't enough. We have to call in the six sages to finish this deed. But going back, the sheer terror Ganon struck amongst all children playing this relic of a game was enough to make this the best and most memorable boss in all of Zelda game history. Honestly, Ocarina of Time will always have a place in my heart along with many others. And Ganon from Ocarina of Time deserves the title as number one. Thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. Did I miss any? How would you have made the list? Are there any other top tens you would like to see me do on Zelda? Let me know in the comments below, and I will respond to every single one of you. I dare you. Go ahead. Try it. I only saved this segment for the end, but don't forget to check out Copod. Things get a little bit past rated R, so if you're mature enough and want to hang out, it's the place to be. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.